Our scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 66, verses 8 through 20. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has pres preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you, vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you and an offering of rams. I will offer bulls and goats. Come and hear all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. May these words inspire us, guide us, and lead us on a pathway of understanding more fully God's intention for our living. Amen. For you, O oh God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. We went through fire and through water, yet you have brought us out into a spacious place. It certainly seems that God tests us over the course of our lifetime. Like silver ore, which must be purified to yield a product of great treasure and worth, most of us know all too well what it feels like to go through the smelting pots of life. And where we, when we are in those pots, the pots of lost ones, of lost children, the pots of abuse and prejudice, the pots of deception and betrayal and broken promises, the pots of rejection and isolation and victimization. When we are in those pots, the singeing, burning, tortuous, breath-stealing flames and heat are almost more than we can bear. Maybe it feels like it's more than we can bear, partly because we're not always sure if we'll ever get out of those pots. Perhaps it's partly due to the fact that we're not sure who we'll be if we do get out. And partly, perhaps, because we're not entirely sure if we ourselves are partly to blame for landing us in the pots in the first place. All this pain is indeed terrible. But we find ourselves calling out to God for mercy and relief even when we might not have been a convinced believer in God's existence before that moment. We suddenly find ourselves begging and praying without ceasing for deliverance. We plead and we even find ourselves bargaining to be saved from the hellish pain in which we find ourselves. And it's not until we come through on the other side of all that that we're able to see it all how God was working through the fire. Perhaps plucking us up and out of those smelting pots and submerging us, bathing us into the cooling, saving waters of loving mercy. It's often not until we come through on the other side that we dare to confess the miracle that we survived at all. 
Now, I suspect that none of us joyfully dance in the fiery furnace of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, singing God's praises for being in that fiery furnace. And sometimes I wonder how many of us are able to sing doxologies even after we've been pulled out of the pots and placed out upon the polishing shelves to cool. But it's certainly after the pain has passed that we can recognize how life's experiences, how life's dangers and disappointments refine us, how they hone us, strengthen and polish us for what lies ahead in our life's journey. When Doug and I dreamed of having children, we were, as are most parents, idealistic about what family life would be like. We pictured the ideal. We pictured the excitement and wonder of pregnancy, the fulfillment of a perfect little bundle of joy somehow being popped down into our laps, all clean and cooing and beautiful. And then, of course, playing with them and watching them with pride as they grew into teenagers and young adults. We envisioned, envisioned gowns and diplomas, maybe even romances and perhaps wedding bells. And of course, the joy of grandchildren coming to gather around our Christmas tree on the porch all beautiful visions of joyful bliss, none of which, of course, comes without the birthing pains of labor, none of which comes without the terrible twos and the trying threes, the impossible preteen and teenage years when you're tempted to lock them in a closet until they age out, <laughs> or at least until they're 18 and move off to college or can earn an income on their own. Parenting isn't an easy experience. It is often fraught with times of terrible stress and disappointment, of pain and loneliness. And it's often only after they've grown up that we realize that we have been blessed. After all that foundation laying, building, defending, only on the other side of what it is seemingly a smelting pot experience, can we dare to exhale and turn to God with notes of thanks? And even then, we need to realize that the smelting pots are not totally closed. For many of us will inevitably get singed again and again and again with disappointments and the pains only parents can experience. On this Mother's Day, I applaud all the childbearing and all the non-childbearing but nurturing, backbreaking, exhausted, self-sacrificing parents who bear the primary responsibility for presenting to the constantly evolving, changing world the next generation those whom we call the hope of our world's future. On this Mother's Day, I applaud all the women and men of our communities who dare to adopt this generation of hope for our future and who participate in laying the foundation through which future generations will take on the responsibility for God's world and God's children. I applaud you. I applaud those who, who teach them and support them and train and guide and model and love and forgive and sacrifice and use the best that they have to give for the sake of those who are the hope of God's kingdom. I applaud you. And today I give thanks for all of who you are and all that you do. This parenting business is a difficult process of refining, and yet once we get through the hot spots, 
the psalmist urges us to celebrate how awesome are the works of the Lord. This psalm was written for a people returning to their home in Jerusalem, the soil of their heritage from the foreign lands of Babylon, a land which served to divide and conquer their faith as a people, a people who believed that they had been chosen, chosen especially by God to live a life that was ultimately intended and designed specifically for them. Indeed, they had been through a time when they were proven and refined like silver in a smelter. Their suffering was great. Their afflictions were long-lasting and devastating. But God brought them through them to a place of safety where there was a new life. A new life lived in the abundance of God's grace, but the smelting pots were never completely closed. And they would get singed, and they would get burned, and they would be tried again and again and again. But God has always been with God's people. And so with each trial, with each experience of the smelting pot, God gave evidence of God's presence that continued to be with them. We go through smelting pot times within the life experience of a church as well. Foundations for the future must always be laid and built upon and then redesigned and reconstru reconstructed very often they're torn down again so that something new and more promising can be built. We go through our Babylonian exile times of disappointment and estrangement and even despair. Despite our best hopes and intentions, sometimes we find ourselves caught in the boiling pots of misunderstanding and dashed dreams. And while we work through these difficult and often painful times, we wonder, how can this be happening to us? Didn't God create this church for our salvation, hope, and happiness? Will the pain of hard times ever, ever stop? Will God save us from our lost ways and set us back on the right path of righteousness and good times. We must believe, reminds the psalmist. We must understand that sometimes we will indeed be put to a test of our faithfulness. Just as silver is purified by fire, so God tests us. Now this doesn't mean that God intentionally places us in pathways where we will be hurt where we will suffer from condemnation, brutality, ridicule, and rejection. I don't believe that God ever created with the intention of turning us into victims, because I absolutely strongly believe that God created us to be victors. God's intention is for us to be victorious over all that threatens to separate us from living in the abundance of God's loving presence. But his abundance is not going to be handed to us casually on a silver platter. Sometimes we need to work hard because sometimes perhaps we need to go through the proverbial spiritual warfare the spiritual battle to attain it. We need to be made strong. We need to be refined by the challenges of life in order to fully appreciate this incredible gift of grace that is offered to us from God. Our choice to live a Christian lifestyle sometimes places us in pathways obstructed by controversy and pain. There will be times when we are tempted to abandon that choice 
when the fires singe our extremities. But if we abandon those fires too early, we might be left weak and unable to withstand life's challenges. It's hard to know how long to stay in the fiery pot. And that's why, my friends, it is ultimately good that God is the silversmith and not us. We must not lose heart. We must hold on to our trust that it is not God's intention that we stay in the fiery flames forever and ever and ever. There is life on the other side where we will sit in all the glory of God's wisdom and love. Let us try to remember to tell the story of deliverance and salvation that awaits us in that other time and to tell that story while we're still in the fiery pot, not always afterwards. It's not easy, it's not comfortable, but it is part of the purification process. It is our testing time. It is the time to make public testimony so that your story and my story may become like a shoot grafted into the olive tree of Israel that bears new life. Come, says the psalmist, come and listen all who honor God. And I will tell you what God has done and what God will do for you and for me, both in and on the other side of life's smelting pots. The good news is we do survive. In fact, we not only survive, but we thrive. And we are once again able to live fully and fruitfully again because that is God's plan. So let us praise God, be thankful, amen.